Test, test. Good morning. And how is everyone today? Welcome to everyone who's uh, joining us here in person this morning and as well to those who are joining us online. It's great to have you with us this second Sunday in Advent. Uh, before we uh, enter into our time of worship, let us uh, start with prayer. God of imagination and all creation, Help us to broaden our minds to see your desire for your kingdom. Open our hearts to allow us to live in harmony with all your people and with all creation. Let us imagine and live into your possibilities. Amen. And uh, take a moment now for uh, any sharing or announcements. Sometimes it takes people... Oh. Just want to, uh, is this on? You can hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, movie night, I'd like to thank those that came and supported us, and everyone was so generous. We made $282 at our movie night, so we really appreciate that. And for anyone that's ordered uh, their carrot pudding, uh, I have them uh, after service. If you want to see me in the LA Hall, I have your puddings for you. So thank you. And, uh, and also, Thank you for that, too, because I think by the time we finish up with our puddings and our microwave bowl holders will be another two to three hundred dollars. So we've reached our budget. So we're on behalf of the outreach committee. Thank you so much. Awesome. Um, a few announcements from me. The uh, make sure I get my head straight here first. Let's where to start. OK. December the 14th is our uh, hymn sing-along. It's Wednesday at 7 p.m. here. Um, we are, I've had a number of requests for hymns, so I think we should be really good to go forward. I'm looking forward to it. Hope everyone can come out, bring your friends. It will be a free will offering again with uh, proceeds going to our uh, refugee sponsorship fund. Um, next Sunday is communion. And then on the 21st of December will be our longest night service, where we take time to create a space for those who are uh, struggling with uh, a lot of the different emotions that can certainly accompany you at this time of year, in times of loss and loneliness or concern for the future. All of those things are certainly part of the things that we share. And so let's, this service is a time to make space for that. It will not be streamed. It will not be a stream service. Um, part of the reasoning for that is that we want to create this to be as safe a place as possible where people are not concerned as to whether or not their image is going to be beamed to the Internet. So there will be no streaming of that service. It's just for those who gather here. And we are partnering with South Cuga, so uh, Pastor Don Valentine from South Kyogo will be helping me to lead that service. Okay. Um, 
Anything else? Anyone want, wishes to share? Um, we failed to do this last week, but we want to take a moment to uh, give thanks and reflection for the life of John Patterson, who passed away uh, a little over a week ago. And so uh, we want to remember his life and express our gratitude for all he contributed to his community and to this congregation. So let's take a moment of silence before our time of prayer. Unless there's anyone who wishes to say anything, if there's anyone that has that wishes to speak up, you're certainly welcome to do so. Creator and sustainer of all, we pray for the family and friends of John Patterson that they may know the comfort of your love. God, hear our prayer. We pray that you will inspire us as bearers of your love to support them in their grief. We remember also those who mourn, remembering all who suffer in any way. May they know the blessing of your peace. God, hear our prayer. Give us patience and faith in this time of loss that we may come to understand the wonder of your healing power and the mystery of your love. God, hear our prayer. Give us a vision of your purpose and such assurance of your love and strength that we may ever hold fast the hope which is in the risen Christ. God, hear our prayer. God of grace, in the resurrection of your Son, you have given us new and living hope. Help us to know that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Savior, and in the comfort of your Spirit, Amen. Okay. Now let us enter into our time of worship as we sing our Sanctus Maranatha, number 19 in more voices, and we'll sing it through three times. invite you to join in our call to worship. <clears throat> ah, okay. Imagine with us. We imagine a world. Imagine God's world. God's holy mountain provides refuge, peace, and safety. We come to worship. We come to the mountain. Worship the one who makes the tiny sheep and uses it to signal the peace of God. Amen. Please be seated. build a new creation to find a way through the wilderness together. Let us imagine how we might turn around and learn from that tiny green shoot of new life. In the wilderness of this moment, we wait for the dawn to break and give light to all who find the landscape bleak and full of shadow. We need... We need 
We need light to guide our feet into the way of peace. And so today we bring one candle to join our hope in our constant need for peace. And we invite Joanne to bring the peace candle. We had, uh, I'd asked you at the beginning to come and place your greens, your green shoots amongst the, amongst our, our growing advent. With this one light, we pray. O oh God, we place this light in this holy space as a reminder we are on this journey together. Be light along all our paths. Lead us to a more just world and help us to stay awake and present to your love in each ordinary day. Amen. And uh, just as a, a heads up for next week so that everyone knows next week we're going to add flowers so that's what we'll be doing at the beginning of the service next week there'll be a basket of flowers or parts of flowers who knows exactly what we're going to end up with but and you'll be invited to add those to the greenery and the newspapers as we continue to build our our advent wreath now let us join in the first two verses of hope is a star Please stand if you're able. I'm going to sit down here and see if there's anyone who's young, young at heart, who wants to come forward and join me. Yeah. Nate. Nope. Okay. So, see these candles. You know what's coming up later this month? Christmas. Yeah, you got that one right. Good stuff. Do you know what we in the church do for the four Sundays before we get to Christmas? No. Well, that's what I thought the answer was going to be. So I thought this would be a really good time to sort of explain a little bit. In the church, we refer to the four Sundays that come just before Christmas as Advent. And that's a word that gets used a lot in the church, Advent. And what it basically means is preparing for Christmas, preparing for the coming of Jesus. And so we don't like to just sort of, surprise, it's Christmas. We like to work and prepare for it. So we take four Sundays to prepare for the coming of Christmas. And each of those Sundays, we light a candle, a special candle, and we reflect and think, focus on some of the things that uh, we believe that God wishes for all of us. And so the first Sunday, that's that candle there, is hope hope that things can get better, that we don't have to always live with things being not so nice. And the second Sunday, which is today, is peace. You know what we talk about with peace? It's, it's, it's a, peace means not being in conflict, no war, 
no violence. The idea that people get along. So we hope that we can live in peace. The third Sunday is joy. You know the word joy? Yeah? What's, what, what does joy mean to you? Trying to figure it out now? Yeah. It's, you know what? A lot of people have trouble with that one. <laughs> it's, it's sort of like happiness, but more. It's like just this feeling that you want to celebrate the good things going on in your life and focus on the good stuff that's happening in your life and express it. So it's not just you're holding it inside, but you're letting it out so everyone can see it. And, and they can join you in being in that rejoicing, you know, being really, really happy and living life that it's a gift that God has given you. That's all sort of what joy is about. Like I say, it can be a tough one to explain, so no problem there. And then the last one is the fourth, the fourth Sunday is love. That, you know, so you love your parents, your parents love you, you love other, lots of members of your family, people, and the idea is we want to expand that love to everyone that we meet. And hope that everyone shares that love with you. So we want to re reflect and focus on that. And the idea is, those are four things that God really wants for all of us. And how can we work with God to make those things real in the world? So, as you go on with the rest of your day and the rest of your week and leading up to Christmas, that's something for you to think about. Okay? Let's take a quick moment for prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of Jesus in our lives. We thank you for all that you do for us and all that you wish for us. And as we prepare for the coming of Christmas, help us to reflect on the hope and the peace and the joy and love that you desire for us and that you offer us. And help us to embrace those things in our lives. Amen. Well, thanks, guys. Joanne's ready to uh, go downstairs with you for some time. Let's take time for prayer once again. As John the baptizer called us to repent as the kingdom of heaven comes near, yet we often decide that we would rather not change our lives to see that realm. Let us come to God and ask for a spirit of repentance as we confess our sins to God and to one another. Hear our hearts, God, of peace and justice. We hear your call for repentance and we often ignore it. We find it easier not to change than to reor reorient our lives to you. We find it is more convenient to continue our lives than re-examine them. We would rather glorify being busy than take time to explore the wonders of your word and your world through play. Turn our hearts. Open us to the wonder of your peace and cultivate a desire in us to seek it. Let us know the freedom of your grace. Amen. Blessed God alone who does wonder Blessed is God alone who does wondrous things. Through Jesus Christ we are forgiven, redeemed, and loved. Amen. I get to invite the choir forward now.
So it must be turned off because the altos are really tiresome. reading this morning is Isaiah 11, verses 1 to 10, the peaceful kingdom. A shoot shall come out, of, out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. A wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, 
and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Thank you, Sharon, and thank you to the choir. very much appreciate and grateful for the gifts provided by this congregation. As I've started doing the last few Sundays, I'm going to continue with another passage of scripture from uh, the Gospel of Matthew, which is also part of the readings for this week. It comes from Matthew chapter 3. It's the proclamation of John the Baptist. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. When the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Jesse Stump. I'm done that scripture reading. Sorry, I should sort of (coughs) pause for a moment after the scripture, and then maybe say, may these words be blessed to our understanding. The stump of Jesse, or Jesse's stump. What does that mean? Well, Jesse, in Scripture, is the father of David, the beloved king of Israel. It's suspected that the passage from Isaiah, referring to the stump of Jesse, was written around the time that Babylon conquered Judah and dragged the rulers and the people of authority off into exile. There is a belief that the royal line of David has come to an end at that point. That's what the people of of Judah, the people of Jerusalem, they believe. It's over. that, That royal line of David has come to an end. It is no more. The thought of another ruler from the line of David seems pretty much impossible to them at this point. It's dead. To the people of Judah and Jerusalem, this image then, this image of new growth from that dead stump, so there's this image that they have, it's done, nothing can possibly grow there now. And yet Isaiah says new growth can and will come from that root. In God, all things are possible, and where we see ruin and death, where we see no possibility for growth, God will make things grow. 
And this passage from Isaiah is a promise of something new. It is a promise of new life for the people of Judah and Jerusalem. It is an assurance God has not forgotten or abandoned the people of Israel. But more than that, God promises that something new will be that something new will be new in a great many ways. Because let's not forget that Isaiah does not spare the feelings of Judah's king and royalty and the powerful of Judah prior to the invasion by Babylon. Isaiah makes it clear that the rulers of the kingdom have governed unjustly that the rich have exploited the poor, leaving people hungry, stealing land and homes as well. They have forced people to work for little, and they have left them hungry. Essentially, Isaiah says that they have lost their right and their privilege to govern and rule God's people. But the new growth that will come from the root of Jesse will be filled with God's spirit, This new ruler who was promised will govern justly. The poor will be judged fairly, and this promised ruler will govern with righteousness and faith. So yet again, we are offered an example of a prophet speaking clearly about the state of the world in front of him, but also offering a vision of what the world can be if we have faith and live with the hope of what can be. If we have the courage and purpose to work towards this world. But Isaiah also sees room on this holy mountain that he imagines for all of God's creatures. Isaiah notes there are predators and prey. There are poisonous serpents and innocent children. And yet there is room for all of them. But that does not mean all actions are accepted. The leopards and the lions, the wolves who hunt the goats and lambs will turn to eating straw. The vipers who are so dangerous will not attack the children who rest on their nests. We are called to change our destructive and self-interested behaviors. We are called to give some thought to those who have lost their voice and their power. We are called to take action for those who are going hungry or who have lost their homes. We are called to live with respect in creation. Isaiah constantly turns to nature imagery to emphasize his point about the world we live in and the world this can be. Because we are part of God's wondrous creation and we are called to take the the care and stewardship of this creation seriously. We are to see see it as more than a resource simply waiting to be exploited for our personal gain. Scripture keeps challenging us to look with clear eyes at the world around us, to recognize the ways that we have lost our way and have taken for granted what God has blessed to us. Today's reading from the Gospel of Matthew has John the Baptizer announcing the coming of the Messiah. It is an announcement that changes in the air. He is not bringing this change himself. He's very clear quick to point out. But he is here to announce it, and he challenges us to ask, are we prepared for what is coming? Are we living in a way that we can stand before Jesus and say, I am with you? But he also assures his listeners that there is time, there is always time to change our course, to repent. Can we recognize the ways our actions have harmed others or have ignored the plight of our fellow creatures in God's world? Today is the second Sunday in Advent. It is dedicated to peace. There is little explicit talk of peace so far in this reflection. I get that. 
You see, peace is more than merely an absence of violence. Oh, those, are, those who are in power may be satisfied with that definition. Well, no one's fighting. We have peace. It works for them. They don't have to be concerned about violence when those they rule over are too beaten down or terrified to challenge their rule. But in a world dominated by one particular class or group who keep power by the threat of violence and the occasional use of that violence as a reminder of who is in charge, it's not really a state of peace that is the status quo, or so I would argue, and so a great many others would. Isaiah offers a vision of a peace that comes from a place of real justice, where the poor and the meek are offered the same opportunities, the same voice, and the same promise as everyone else who exists on God's holy mountain. This is a peace built on a foundation of love and justice, a peace centered on love and mercy. It can sometimes seem that such a vision of what can be is a long way from being a reality. We can look at the world around us and wonder how it can possibly come to be considering the infertile ground for such a vision. How can that vision that Isaiah offers truly come to be, considering what we see around us right now? And yet Isaiah tells us God can find and draw forth new life in even the, boat, the harshest of, or barren of lands. In fact, it is possible the seeds of such change have already been planted and are beginning to find purchase. If we look carefully, we look carefully at the very or at the very least keep our eyes open, we may spot the signs of new growth beginning to peek through, offering us a sign of hope and a sign of peace. And so it is my prayer that our eyes are open, that our senses are alive to all the signs of new growth, all the signs of possibility that are around us so that we can say with meaning, thanks be to God. Amen. continue to sing our hymn for reflection. uh, This week it is still, still, still. Number 47, the voices united. I I ask you to stay seated as we sing today.
The psalmist says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We come to God's house to pray for peace, justice, and hope. And our offerings help us as a community of faith and support us when, as we work towards God's call. Let us worship God with God's tithes and our offerings. And as I gather up our offerings, let us join in our offertory hymn in the bleak midwinter, verse 4. Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. Almighty and all-loving one, we lift up today our thanks to you. Can we ever catalog all the ways you have blessed our lives? We dedicate those to you today. Take our very best. May it help bring about peace on your holy mountain. With gratitude and anticipation, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We enter into a time of prayer once more as we gather our prayers as a community of faith together and hold them out to God. Prayers for ourselves and those we love. Prayers for the community in general. Prayers of gratitude and prayers of hope for things to get better. And so we pray. God of hope, we give thanks for how you sustain us with air to breathe and water to drink. We celebrate that you have created a beautiful world full of plants, animals, rivers, oceans, woodlands, grasslands, and mountains. Help us, God, to find balance in ourselves. Forgive us for the times when we hurt others with careless words and actions. Give us courage to be voices crying out in the wilderness for those who are vulnerable and may be preyed upon by the injustice of bullying, exclusion, poverty, and violence. We ask that you be near to those who are feeling hopeless, both in our community and other communities around the world. Sustain us with your hope, O God. We lift up to you aloud, or in the silence of our hearts, all those in need of healing and peace. Healing God, we Pray for those who are ill and those who are in pain. We pray for those living with the fear of what tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or the day after that might bring. We pray for those who are lonely or alone, those who are grieving and those who are remembering past hurts and losses. And 
as we bring this time of prayer to a close, we pray now that prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, I was made very clear to me this morning <laughs> that we've never sung this song before. I've sung it. <laughs> but that's also why I asked that the, uh, the choir take a shot at it before we actually get to today. Now, so hopefully they figured it out a little bit. <laughs> Let's join together singing People Look East. It's an Advent hymn. We need to sing some Advent hymns. I'm sorry. Yes, we do. Okay. So speaks your pastor. Please stand if you're able.
and I thank you for your participation in today's worship service. And as you go forth the rest of your week, I hope you continue to find God at work in and around and amongst you and through you. So go forth as a little child. Go forth seeking to see as God sees with unending love for every creature. May it be so. Alleluia. Amen. What can I do? What can I say? What can I say? What can I bring? I'll sing with joy. I'll say a prayer. I'll bring my love. I'll do my share. One more time. What can I do? What can I bring? time at hockey. <laughs> 